Are you a music lover, an audiophile, a hoarder, or a collector when it comes to your music as well as to your vintage audio equipment? Today I'm going to explore that. I hope you enjoy the video and please hit that subscribe button if you enjoy this video and you'd like to see more like it. I'm going to talk a little bit about how I got to where I am today at 61 years old and where it all started and where it's at now and I'm hoping that you guys will comment down below and let me know how you, how you got to where you are today. So it doesn't matter if you're 61 like me, you might be 81. You might be 18, you know, so it'd be very interesting for me to see how you got into vintage audio. You know, was it your experiences? Was it your family? What was it? I think most of us probably first were music lovers. I know I was. In around 1970, I wanted an AM, FM cassette portable. You know, one of those portable AM FM cassettes with a handle on it, something you could pick up, take outdoors, and it ran on batteries, and I begged my parents for it. I also wanted a dirt bike, and I think my parents said, get them that thing there, that electronic thing, because it's a lot cheaper than a dirt bike, and he might not kill himself. Also, our family had a console system, you know, the typical console, you know, Two speaker, a big wood cabinet, two speakers on each side, had an AM FM radio in it, had an eight track, and had a turntable. And I can remember sitting in front of that thing and listening to it. I remember a couple times my parents getting up at night saying, turn it down. We're trying to sleep. So and this is when I was, uh, you know, at the same age. You know, I was 12, 13, 14, 15. And so I, I think I was a uh, certainly a music lover first because I didn't know what brands. I didn't know Zenith from Macintosh, you know. So it was all about the music at that point. I think I became an audiophile when I was a teenager, when I got my first job, like a lot of kids in the 70s, I worked at, I worked at Pizza Hut. I had friends that worked at Burger King or were bussing tables at a seafood restaurant, whatever. But everybody kind of had a job. And in my case, like most kids' cases, when you're 16, you're still living at home. Uh, you're not paying the mortgage. You're not paying the electric. Um, you're even eating most of mom and dad's food. So uh, you had some extra money. And I finally had some money to buy stereo equipment and um, and I did uh, I bought a ka 3500 Kenwood I bought a tu 717 Sansui um, I bought an x1000 TX reel to reel all those I still own I bought other pieces too that I don't have anymore but um, I, I think I became an audiophile then even though I spent a lot of money on on records and on music I still was very interested in the equipment and I bought a, a lot of different pieces over the years in, in my late teens into the early 20s. It's on to number three hoarding. When I googled hoarding the first thing that came up was an article from the Mayo Clinic. Hoarding disorder symptoms and causes and I read the description and it was me. Because when I see a piece of old vintage stereo equipment that's just been abused, abandoned, I, I can't leave it behind. I can't. You know, so I've got some pieces through the years that just look terrible because that just doesn't matter to me. They don't have to be perfect. And so I guess I am a hoarder. And that reminds me of a story a few years ago when uh, me and my better half uh, moved into this home. Um, we had some people over. And one of the ladies, I was showing her my collection of stuff. And you could just see kind of the bewilderment on her face like, good God. How does your uh, better half put up with you? But anyway, she, she looked at me and she said, why do you have so many? You can only listen to one at a time. And I didn't think about this beforehand, but I looked at her and I said, how many pairs of shoes can you wear at the same time? And she just had this look like deer in the headlights. 
right? I, I mean, it's the same kind of idea. So, I mean, if you've got a bunch of pair of shoes in, um, in your closet, uh, are you a hoarder? So anyway, uh, I, I think that's what people with an illness do though, right? They have some sort of disorder like hoarding and then they make it sound like they're okay and you're the one with the problem. <laughs> so I don't know. But anyway, I, 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 I am a happy hoarder, I guess. So I, I hope you guys are thinking about your stories too as we go along here and that you uh, put them down at the comments uh, later on. Four, a collector. Well, I certainly am that. I, I, I don't know how I can't be a, a collector, but really of the first three items, you know, music lover, I, I believe I am that. Audiophile, I believe I'm that. A hoarder, okay, I believe I'm that too, but I'm also a collector. And I just love this equipment from around 1960 to the early 1980s. I mean, it's just my thing. I really enjoy it. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you've been thinking about what to put down in the comments uh, and what your story was. And if you liked this video, I'd appreciate a like. If you think somebody you know uh, might l like my videos, please share it with them. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. So thank you again, and have a good day.